So, again, now let's think about having, instead of y is just some formula of an x, let's think of the parametric curve. x is equal to a function of t, and y is equal to a function of t. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to put the formula in here for dy dx, right? Using dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. That's what's going to go in right there. But also, I have a dx here. So if x is f of t, then dx, just like a substitution, if x is f of t, then what's dx? f prime of t dt. Now, if you're missing your 10.2... Notes. Did everybody find theirs? Okay. okay. Yeah. You got paper? You need to write? Okay. We can steal some out of the printer, too, if anybody's missing theirs. Okay. So now I'm just going to plug this in here and this in for dx. And so what I get is that L is the integral of the square root of 1 plus... And now inside here is going to be a big fraction, dy over dt divided by dx over dt, quantity squared. And then outside here is going to be f prime, or that's dx dt right there, dx dt times dt. It's just a direct substitution in there. And now I'm just going to do some algebra. Oh, and by the way, my limits, since this curve is being traced out as t goes from alpha to beta, instead of having an a and b here, it's going to be whatever the value of t is that traces out that curve, which means it goes from t equals alpha to t equals beta. It's whatever the t is at the starting point and whatever the T is at the ending point. So that's why I didn't put just A and B in there, because that's what X goes from. So T is essentially, when the T is alpha, X is A. When T is beta, X is B. Okay. So, again, I'm going to do some algebra. Now, right in here, I've got dy dt squared on top and dx dt squared on bottom. I'm going to treat this as 1 over 1 here, and I'm going to find the common denominator and combine those two together, right? The common denominator would be dx dt squared. <clears throat> so what this now looks like is the integral from a to b, the square root of, okay, on bottom I've got dx dt squared. This 1 over 1 is going to be at dx dt squared over dx dt squared. So I've got dx dt squared plus the numerator of this one, which is dy dt squared, all times out here is dx dt dt. So, notice the bottom of this fraction right here is still underneath the radical, right? So what happens if I pull it outside the radical? Square root of a square, right? This just becomes, on the outside, 1 over dx dt, right? This, I'll highlight it just so you see it. This piece right here, I could pull outside the radical, and make it just 1 over dx dt. But then I've got this dx dt right here. 
right? So what are they going to do? They cancel each other out completely. Because you pull it outside, it cancels the square, and then you've got one on bottom, one on top, they cancel. And so what are you left with? Something much simpler, right? You just have this right here inside. So this whole integral becomes this formula right down there. So the length of a curve that's parametric is the integral from alpha to beta of the derivative of x oh, squared, square root of the derivative x squared plus the derivative y squared. Now that's actually a very elegant looking formula because it should look familiar to you. What does that resemble? Does anybody see it, what I'm talking about? It's kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, which is also where the, uh, the formula for distance right, comes from. So if I were to ask you, give you two points and say, what's the distance between those two points? Do you remember doing things like change in x squared plus change in y squared? Or maybe x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared? That's like the distance formula. That's essentially what the length formula is, is it's the distance formula. But instead of change in x, you have the rate of change of x with respect to t. And instead of change in y squared, it's the rate of change of y with respect to t squared. But that's how you can find the length of any parametric curve now. Okay, So there's another formula you just got to remember. Whenever you're given a parametric curve, you're just going to have to make sure you know where the starting point and the end point are, and then just plug it into that formula. Okay, so the example here that I've given you is a, a parametric curve that we've looked at before, which is this uh, cycloid. The cycloid is the one where you've got a circle, and you let it roll, and you trace out the path of this point starting right there. So the, the question now is, how long is one arch of the cycloid? How long is that? So all you really need to know is what's the starting alpha, what's the ending beta? How long is one of these trace out for? <laughs> now we actually did this. You, uh, you were playing with the little uh, web tool where you could adjust the R and trace this thing out. One of the questions in your homework, this was in the tech homework, was... What's the theta that gives me the starting and the ending point of one arch? If you can't, if you don't have a tool like that to play with, the other thing you can do is just set this equal to the coordinates of those points. Turns out that one arch is traced out by 0 to 2 pi. The easiest way to check that is to just go to Wolfram Alpha or go to Maple and start graphing them the way I taught you how to graph a parametric curve and plug in the different values of theta as a range and see how far it goes. So if you plugged in theta equals 0 to pi and it only went half the arch, you, need, you know you need to go further. Usually, whenever you see sines and cosines in your parametric curves, it's going to be 0 to 2 pi, or maybe 0 to pi, or maybe 0 to 4 pi. It's some multiple of pi that's your range for tracing out one of these curves. Okay? But since we now know that it goes from 0 to 2 pi, then all we've got to do to find the length is plug it into the formula. This is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of dx, in this case, theta squared plus dy d theta squared. Okay, so integral from 0 to 2 pi. What is the derivative of x with respect to theta? Treat r as a constant for now. So the derivative of this, which is r theta minus r sine theta, The derivative of r theta, if r is a constant, is just uh, the way. 
is R. Because theta is the variable, yeah. right? And then this one, the R just hangs around, but derivative of sine is just cosine. So that's dx d theta quantity squared. Derivative of r theta is r. Derivative of r sine theta is r cosine theta. Because so r is a constant in this model. Okay, this one down here is r minus r cosine theta. So let's do dy d theta. The derivative of r with respect to theta, r is a constant. So it's zero. And then derivative of minus r cosine theta is going to be a positive r sine theta. So zero plus is right like that. Oh, I left it up here? Yeah. Oh, okay, so that, I have no excuse for that. Yeah. Okay, now here's, here's some good news for you. First of all, I'm going to simplify this, and then I'll give you the good news. Actually, maybe I'm not even going to simplify this. Okay, here's the good news. In this chapter, I don't care if you can integrate. I mean, on the final exam in this class, you will have to integrate. But in this chapter, what am I really wanting you to learn how to do? Set it up. I want you to get to this point. This is the most important thing that you can do. Okay? Now, this is actually not that hard of an integral to do, but there's a few steps. I'm perfectly satisfied, and we will do this on the test. To use maple or to use Wolfram Alpha to get the integral, okay? So I'm going to go, just so you can see me do this, but in the end, you'll need to do this on your own. If I go to Wolfram Alpha, not Wolf Alpha, how about Alpha? All right, you're going to have to tell me what the integral is. It is the integral of what? Square root. Square root of... <clears throat> So parentheses r minus r times cosine. I'm going to use t's because I don't like typing out theta the whole time. All of that squared plus r times sine of t squared. Close the parentheses for the square root. 4, so dt, where t goes from? When we check and make sure that the integral looks like it's supposed to. And it tells me the answer is 8 square root of r squared. Now the reason it doesn't simplify that, it doesn't know anything about r. We know something about r. We know that r is always positive because it's a radius. right? The square root of r squared, by the way, is technically not just r. It's the absolute value of r, because if you have a negative value in for r, the square and the square root don't cancel. But we don't have negative values for r in our particular case. So our final answer would be, what is it? 8r. So I would just write 8r. So a lot of this chapter is about setting up the integral to get the answer, not so much about actually taking the integral. We want, we're going to assume at this point that we can do the integrals, and if we don't do them by hand, at the very least, we can do them using either tables or a computer algebra system like Wolfram Alpha. Okay. But you see, I mean, all, all I had to do to be able to get there was to recognize that length of a parametric curve is given by this formula. I needed to find where to plug my stuff in. 
So do you see where I got what I plugged in? Taking the derivatives. In this case, there was one extra wrinkle, and that was treating r as a constant. That's not entirely new to you, so you should be able to do that. Okay. So at this point, I'm, I'm going to create a homework assignment uh, later today for you, um, actually right after class, that's going to have some problems from 10.2 on it. Um, mostly problems of, uh, well, they're finding the the derivatives and uh, second derivatives, integrals, and lengths of curves, since I have not assigned that to you yet. And that's what's going to be due Wednesday. Okay, um, We have time now to go ahead and finish up 10.3 as well. And um, I'm going to combine 10.3 and 10.4 into one homework um, assignment for you because they're both dealing now with the next kind of way of graphing functions um, beyond parametric curves, talking about polar curves. 